Our focus this week will be on planning your search. In other words, developing strategies for locating the information that you need. I'm going to break down our lecture today into three parts. One, tools available. Number two, strategies for searching. And number three, you as a searcher. So part one today, we're going to focus on tools. So the right tool can really help facilitate your research. It can help you do better research, help you find things more quickly and efficiently. The right tools will help you quickly and easily find that spot on information. They will help lead you to similar types of information or at the very least give you an idea of how to modify your research. They're going to give you more information to help you do your search. One downfall of these tools is it's not always clear which tool is right. Again, we have many resources at UMass, so in a large library system like the one here, you have many options and it can be challenging to discern why one database is more relevant than another one. Of course, the wrong tool will make your research more challenging. It might provide you with mediocre or poor information. You might find an overwhelming amount of researches, even if you have a pretty good search string. So you might see something like this with Google. You might have a great search string, but it still gives you millions of results. Um, and because you're searching through so much stuff with a tool that doesn't quite fit your needs, you'll find that your research takes a lot of time, and that can be really frustrating. Also note, a tool is only as good as how you handle it. So you might have selected the right tool, so you might have selected the right database, but maybe your search string isn't very robust, maybe it's not the best fit for that database. But part of searching is being flexible and learning from your past experience. One thing you need to do to be successful in research is be tenacious. Um, and do remember though that even the most tenacious researchers need help sometimes. My first suggestion is to go to the subject guides or the library guides available to you at the library's webpage. So these are resources written for you by librarians to help you understand what we have available at UMass Amherst. Librarians have extensive knowledge of our databases and other resources we have available, although we might not know everything about every tool that's out there. Um, for example, my background is in the sciences, so I feel pretty comfortable working with databases like Web of Science, PsycInfo, or the Birds of North America. Um, you know, even though I'm comfortable with those, I can pretty comfortably maneuver in many different databases. That being said, if you want specialized help or guidance in something like MADCAD, which is a database of building codes, something I don't have very much experience with, you might want to talk to one of the other librarians, one of my colleagues here at UMass. We have an easy Ask Us box in the top right-hand corner of the library's webpage, or you can search for someone under People. So part two is determining search concepts and keywords. Your search strategy will take you some practice. It's your unique process, so it's going to take you some practice. So don't worry if you don't get it right the first time. It's all about growing. You'll continue to learn and grow. Um, I would, will say before I give you some suggestions, I want to define this phrase, search strings. I've already used it a couple of times. In short, a search string is a string of words or a phrase used to locate or retrieve a specific piece of information contained in a database. Complex search strings can do a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to searching databases. Some suggestions. So your ability to thoughtfully combine keywords and phrases is really important. Knowing alternative phrasing helps a lot. Knowing that the search string adolescents or teens might help refine your search in a database will go a long way. So just having that information in your brain as you're going out and doing your searches will help a lot. And again, stuff like this won't necessarily work in those search engines, search engines like Bing, DuckDuckGo, um, Google. This is a key concept and a key part of why databases are so handy. Um, and of course, don't forget your Boolean operators. So and, or, and not, as well as those other advanced searches. Those are going to be great connectors between concepts and ideas and can really help your search. All right, so we're going to spend a moment dissecting a catalog entry. So I'm reading a book called Teaching to Transgress, and I'm interested in learning more and finding out more books or more pieces of information that are similar to Teaching to Transgress. The first thing I'm going to do is search the title as a phrase in quotes. And 
ta-da! It's the first hit. As you see on the main page, there's a little bit of information on the item, but if you click through, you can get even more information. So right now I can see, again, a little bit more about this item, including the subject terms. Um, in our database of WorldCat Local, it just says subjects, but it's about the same thing. Subject terms, subjects, subject headings. We also got the similar items button, so I can click that, and right away I start to see things that fall in similarly to this book that I've been reading. Many databases have features similar to this, but you might have to dig around for it or look for it. That'll really help you. It's, again, going to really strengthen your search skills. I think the other thing to do is when you're looking at scholarly articles, you can also look at the keywords used in those articles. So this is a great way to, again, expand your vocabulary. You can see how the experts in the field are referring to those subjects, and you can start adding it to your own search string. All right, part three. One of the most important parts is you as the searcher. I think it's important to remember that you're going to revise as you go. You're going to learn more about your subject as you read articles or books on your subject. And one quick revision might be to change your term based on the subject terms or subject headings affiliated with your very interesting article. That can really help you revise and expand and grow. Another important point, adjust as you learn. So this will happen. Um, everyone goes through this growing process when doing research. Even the most seasoned researchers, again, they're going to grow as they understand more about their topic. If you find that you have to change or adjust your topic as a result of your research, that is totally fine. It's you refining this process. It's you really honing your research. This is demonstrating that you're learning a lot about your topic and that your efforts are bearing fruit. And if you find you don't have to adjust your search, that's okay too. If you have a very well formulated thesis, or maybe depending on your assignment or many other constraints, you might be able to stick to your topic as is. Another thing that's really important to do is self reflection and this idea of metacognition and this funny term that really means thinking about your own thinking process. So reflect on your process. How are you approaching a topic? What do you need to know? What do you want to know? Just really build that into your research and it can be something that happens instantly. You don't have to take a lot of time to do it, but just try to work it into your process. Spending a few moments reflecting on your process is again another way to see how you're doing and may provide you with an opportunity to better formulate your search. Again, I will encourage you to document your progress on your process. Think about what's worked, what's not worked, what databases you've searched, your search strings. This can be something that you write down with pen and paper. Maybe you have a spreadsheet open that documents what you've been up to. Any way that you document your process will work. And again, I know you've heard this, but this is an iterative process. It's not gonna be a straight line. You're gonna go forward, you're gonna go back a few steps. That's part of the process. It's part of what makes research unique and really interesting and a lot of fun. You can really go anywhere with research. It's, I don't know, there's nothing else like it. All right, everyone. So that's it for planning your search. Happy planning and happy searching.